Uh, hello, Tony here from Lightwave Digital. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the new instant brush tool in Lightwave 2023. So let me explain the scene. So what I've got is just this basic ground plane with a, a repeating grass texture. If I go into my scene editor, at the side here, look, I show you that I've got the actual land uh, object here and then I'm just using the default uh, camera environment light and distant light. So what I've got in the background is one tree, a rock, a couple of plants and a little patch of grass. So I'll provide this scene with all these items for you so you can go along with it. The items are from uh, Turbo Squid, so I'll also put the link to where I got them from as well. Uh, rather than get you to go and get them yourself and give you a blank scene. Uh, but I'll do that in the description as well. So, once you've got your actual land selected, go down to Properties, and then go along to the tabs, the very end tab said Instancer, Add Instancer, and then Instance Generator, and then it comes up, Item None. Double-click it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add all the items in here. Now, you can add one at a time, but let's just add them all. So we're going to add uh, the grass. We're going to add the tree. We're going to add a plant, a second plant, and the rock. Okay? Let's start with the, the grass. So I'm selecting it. Going over to it, it says Type. Going to Surface. Now, if you've got multiple textures or surfaces on the land, you would need best thing to do is choose it but uh, I'm just going to choose land even though it's only got that one texture on and then under distribution instead of random and uniform you've got the new brush tool so you select it and then you click on paint and when you click on the paint you'll notice that the windows have got this highlighted green area to let you know you're in paint mode okay uh, you've got the radius this is a brush radius and then the distance between each of the actual uh, instances you're putting down. If you hold control down on your keyboard, what this will do is let you uh, dis define the area of the actual brush. So if I just, what I'm doing is I'm just dragging side to side with my mouse as the actual control brush is held down. Like so, so let's leave it around there. And I just want to use the grass. Now, currently, if you just want to use one of these items, you need to have selected items on. Now, I'm not in the minute. So let's say I just wanted to paint using all of them. So let's just say, I, let's just put a uh, random, let's put, let's just put 10 in. And what I'll do is just click once. Now, it's actually gone and took a variety of these and placed them in on your scene. So let's just go and switch all these so we can see them in our scene like so and you'll notice that I've got some trees now the plants so let's just go and uh, turn the paint off you can see them and the rocks and stuff but they're very tiny so they are here so that's based on the size I've created them so let's just go back into paint and uh, I want to clear them all so you can clear them individually like so or you can hold shift and then oh, hold shift and then you can clear them like so just going down making sure nothing's on so what I want to do is I just want to do them one at a time so you have to make sure that selected items on so it's you're basically saying to the brush only only paint what items you've got selected so currently like I said I've got just the grass and I've got a workflow of 10 and the distance well the distance is literally as close as you can get them so when I click it's done it but again it's very small so let's just clear that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here look and it says minimum maximum size let's put in 700 by 300 and then let's click again and then I'm just going to simply unclick the paint tool so we can zoom in and have a look. And as you can see, we've got 10 patches of grass. 
based on that and if we turn on a VPR again here's your 10 patches of grass so let's go back and turn paint back on now if I right mouse click this removes them like so okay but let's start having a play and seeing what we can do so let's I want to leave it at 10 for the time being let me just zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to click and drag down this side let's make a like a a, a kind of what I'll do is I'll put a patch of grass down both sides and then I'm going to use a displacement map later to make some kind of ravine or something so yeah painting away as you do now let's go and put in let's say 50 okay and then let's see and again as you can see oh didn't really want to go over there so let's right mouse click and remove these here look so I don't really want these here so they're more in a line like so okay so happy with that I've got selected the area on so I could go to the plant objects again because it's small they're quite small let's just increase it to say 600 uh, between 600 and 300 we'll, we'll drop this down to 10 and then I'm just clicking every so often so I'm not dragging and clicking because I only want a nice spread of maybe 10 of each of these as you can see here so let's just turn on VPR let's have a little look so as you can see I've got this uh, my grass and then I've got these clumps of these one of the plants here over the actual ground now another thing is currently um, when I'm painting so if I just go into the grass I'm just painting onto this surface but what if I want to manipulate the per the surface later you have to make sure that under rotate the item alignment is normal so if these polygons that make up your land move the actual grass and items on it will move with the actual ground in their placement so you need to make sure you do that on all of them so again otherwise they're just not going to they're not going to be in the right place so let's just why remember tally all of these to be on normals like so okay and again so now let's uh, do maybe plant two which I can't even remember what it looks like and let's put a little bit less again maybe five and it is actually putting them on but the problem I've got is like before I haven't made the size right so let's just clear that let's come down here and make these 750 400 I can't even know what this plant is so we'll see oh yeah it, it's like a it's like a, some kind of reddish plant remember it's only put in five let's put a uh, 15 I mean if I click and drag it will put a lot more in but I don't really want loads of them so let's say that I'm happy with that okay now let's go to tree I'm only going to do one tree at a time because I don't want loads of trees and I can't remember what size this tree is so let's have a look so there it is let's have a quick look what size this is that's okay I suppose let's vary the size a little bit now something else that's important as well is something that you have to remember is with these objects so if I just go into my dope track if I just let's go to my grass a minute let me just turn the actual grass on and have a look at the original grass now the instances of an object uh, brush the objects that you brush it onto the ground using the pivot point positioning so if your pivot point was centered so for instance if you would centered it in modeler and it was in the center of this grass the bottom half of the grass is more likely to be under the ground so what you've got to do is make sure that if you're painting this so I'm sure I've got some that aren't like that 
Yep, so there actually looks like I, I have actually changed it. But I remember the first time I did it, they, they were in the middle. So I was like, why is half of my stuff just under the ground? And then I realised, oh, that was clever of me. Let's just check the uh, tree. So, again, back over to the tree, paint. And, again, you can hold control. I mean, I've got quite a big area of influence here. And I haven't really told the trees to be... They're all the same size. So let's say it to be... We'll leave it at 100 and let it go anything up to 600 because I've no idea how that, what that will do. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably too big. So what I would do is let's clear that. Let's make it 200. We'll tell it to do five trees and we'll put a one in the distance. So... It's doing it, but I think we need to make the brush area a bit bigger. And obviously, we met like most things, uh, the tree and the actual grass and stuff. Some of it, I mean, like I said, I've got it from. Uh, so currently, I'm just clicking. I've got it from Turbo Squid, and some of the polygon sizes on some of them are quite. Are quite big so again and I've got here to help it if you, your computer is fairly slow uh, what you my suggestion is is that maybe for why you're actually painting the actual uh, instances is maybe just have it on boundary box and color your boundary boxes just to and then test it after just because it's just gonna use a lot of your, your actual computer power to do it and it'll be a bit sluggish where now it's not sluggish at all so and they each got their own little color look but again then you can kind of turn on vpr and have a look at so far what you've got going off with the brush and the instancing like so so again just going back to it remember that when you're painting if you've got multiple objects to have it on selected items, if you don't have it on that, it will try and do all of them in one kind of area that you're defining. Uh, I would definitely uh, decide on the radius based on what you kind of want to do. You'll notice that where it usually says instances here, when you go onto the, the paintbrush tool, it does switch to flow, which is really cool. And again, the distance is the distance between each of the uh, the actual instances. But like I said, with grass, I decided it's zero. I'm guessing if you put it as a minus, it will, they will overlap. Make sure under rotation, you've got it on normals. Uh, and again, if you're not working to real world scales, so I just dragged these in. I've resized a few of them, but I haven't resized them to the real what the tree really is in in life. I've just like I said, got them from Turbo Squid and size them all up around the, the right. The re, so the tree's the biggest one, and then the grass looks like it's about right. And then, but I haven't done them to real world size, which really I should have. But I just wanted to get this out just as quickly as I can. So people who are new to instancing or in, new to the, the brush tool can have a little go at it. So, what I'll do is I'm not going to go on too much with this because there isn't that much to it they've made it as simple as they can that's the cool thing about it the simplicity of it I mean, this is like draft one this is your, this is the beginning of the uh, the lightweight brush tool in the instance and brush tool and it's only going to get better which I, I'm really excited to find out what, what, what more they're going to do with it but one more thing what I will do is let's uh, go back to the ground which I'm on I'm going to go to properties Let's go to the primitive tab and let's do a displacement map just to see what happens. So under displacement, let's put procedural in. Now, the problem I've got is uh, with the ground level is it hasn't got a lot of polys, really. I haven't, I haven't gone and made it like a, a massive... I haven't really gone and made it that, that big. Do you know what I mean? So... 
it's kind of up to you what you're kind of going to load. I mean, I have actually got uh, something I can use for this as well. But let's uh, have a go at playing around with this. And let's just see what we can kind of come up with uh, with everything. Let's just bang in... Uh, Five thousand, no, fifty thousand, <laughs> fifty thousand, uh, and you'll notice that it's moved. Put some for five thousand five hundred in. So it's actually moved. Everything's moved, but all the instances because we had it on that normals has followed the contours and the center point of each of the polygons like so. So you've kind of got that which is really cool and it's and it's the same if you animate it so if you're kind of gonna animate this or animate a displacement map again it will do this it'll do exactly the same so if this was an animated displacement map it will do the same thing for you which again simplicity and I really like that. I mean, a lot of people like it. But yeah, I mean, I've banged on for it for a quite a for quite a while. Uh, I'm hoping you've enjoyed the tutorial. It's really simple, like I said. The flow is how many comes out when you click once. You've got your paint. You've got your selected items, which if you've got multiple, you can use. Make sure rotations on normal. Your distance between each other. The radius of your brush. Right mouse click is for uh, deleting as well. Uh, and apart from that, it's really straightforward and easy to use. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've tried to make it as quick as I can, but I never do. I always babble too much. What I'll do is I'll provide this contents direct to you for you directory to have a go at i'll also play around with this do a final one that you can have as well so thanks for listening please go share subscribe go and check out lightwave salvation facebook group and look out for my next tutorial